Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. Uh, today we are going back to a band that we've reviewed on a couple of occasions. Uh, the band is, of course, Band Made. Uh, but we're going to go back to their first single that came out. This was the single that the bulk of people got first uh, introduced to Band Made and was the one that kind of kicked them off when they were first kind of uh, off their first album, first formed. They first they just got into their original look uh, of the Made style before they got their own individuality looks where they've all kind of changed and kind of captured their own style. So this is very much their very, very first song. Uh, and this song is called Frill. Um, I thought it was good because it's good to know where the band kind of came from and what kind of kind of blew them up. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go check out Frill. Breaking new gate. <laughs> Okay, there we go, band made and frill. Uh, let's throw it round the room as always. Gonna throw it to Andy first. 
uh, well, it opened with and, and continued with a sort of really hooky, you know, really good rock riff. So mm. I, I enjoyed that. Obviously, visually, it's very appealing. And then, you know, a few, few seconds and you realise how disconcertingly young they all look or are. But you can, again, you can see what, what, what they're doing there with the, the appeal there. It, it certainly looks like a band's debut video just sort of simply shot in a, in a white room with just performance. I mean, I haven't got a problem with that. I, I like that style of music video. You know, you don't want to see it all the time from from, from bands or your favourite band, but I, I like the video. Um, if if that was a, an American female singer singing that song with English lyrics, I think everybody would be raving about it. There'd be mass appeal for that. That'd be very, very popular. Um, when they did sing the chorus in English, obviously you can, you can tell the sort of language barriers and, and sort of the pronunciation sort of a, a little bit a little bit affected. So it probably would have been better either working on that or, or disregarding the English lyrics. Um, and one thing I took away from the video, on two occasions, the vocalist, main vocalist, when she's got a long note, and, and that's the end of her passage, the microphone disappears. And she, do you know what I mean? The, the editing of that is, 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 is not very good. It reminds me of, one of my ver earliest heavy metal memories is when I got a, a Betamax video tape with Iron Maiden's music videos on and Bruce Dickinson either in Number of the Beast or Run the Hills has this soaring long note just before the solo and then he grabs the mic and jumps out of the way so the, you know, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray can do their solos, but the note's still carrying on over the solo and he's he's long gone with the mic yeah, yeah. over here and I thought, surely it's somebody's job to make sure that sort of thing doesn't happen in music videos and films. Yeah, yeah continuity ele elements. Yeah, and just editing. But yeah, I I quite enjoyed that actually for for several reasons. You know, I say look good, the girls look good, and it was a catchy rock song. So I, mm -hmm. I actually quite enjoyed that. See, I like I for me with the video, what was really interesting was the the split between the the red outfits and the more traditional kind of black and white outfits. Because they don't I don't think after the first tour they really did the red outfits anymore. Uh and then what they've done is they've all kind of changed. So um Missa, who's the bass player, tends to wear a long dress uh pretty much most of the time. Um and they've each of them have cut, kind of changed their style, apart from Miku, who is the rhythm guitarist stroke second lead vocals. She's pretty much stayed the same as that video in most cases everyone else has adjusted their their made outfit to suit their own personalities which i think is a great idea because uh although that's a great look to start with it did feel that there was no kind of individuality amongst it and they've now managed to accomplish their own style of individuality uh i liked the contrast of the video it didn't get boring uh kept interesting cuts um something i picked up the first time i ever saw this is the fact that uh miku i was like well why has she got a guitar she's hardly playing it I don't get it. Uh, and actually, what was, what was the case in this particular stage in their career was she was still learning to play. So at this point, she didn't. She was going to be playing rhythm guitar uh, within the band, and she does. But at the time when this was shot, they hadn't actually learned. She hadn't properly learned to play the song or learned to play guitar properly. So she was kind of showing the few core positions, but doesn't really strum. Whereas live, she actually does. Um, so for me, I don't know if that was a case of if I would have done that video, maybe not had her on the guitar and just kept her as second vocals on that point and then drop the guitar in at a later date when she's actually up to on later videos rather than put it in. There's almost like a thing saying, oh, she will be playing guitar, by the way, because that's what you're going to see live. But um, no fair play on her for doing that. Uh, yeah, very hooky, hooky guitar part. Love the bass solo. Uh, lead guitar side didn't stick around too long a lot of people avoid this track now from band made going oh it's a bit too simplistic compared to what they do now with lots more um flourishes in there and i'm like this is great straight to the point rock track keep it in there uh why why you, why do you want it all to be sort of like avant-garde metal alternate met rock and just just do what you do and do it really well which is what i thought they did there so um yeah people just being funny uh kirk what do you reckon highly enjoyable rock song wasn't it? it it had that late 1980s heavy metal feel to it bands like armored scent oh yes yeah. similar vibe i also certainly heard hailstorm that is the right band isn't it hailstorm Not yeah hailstorm. yeah hailstorm lizzie hale 
she, I, I'd be surprised if she's not cited as an influence. I really like the chorus uplift as well. Mm. Um, really good demonstration of, of a tenor vocal range there. Sorry, not tenor, of a soprano vocal range there. Yeah. Excellent. That uh, that bass solo as well. I'm like you, Dave. That that stood out for me. Again, not overly long. Fantastic production on the music. And if, and if people are staying away from this song because it's simplicity, then. I'm all for more songs like this. This is certainly the best one I've heard from this band. The guitar solo, yep, again, short and sweet. Some really nice phrasing there on the fretboard. Memorable song at the same time. If there was an album of nine tracks like that, I would find it very easy to listen to. Is there much depth to it though? I don't know uh, because, because of the hybrid language situation between Japanese and English. Mm. But I certainly, I would say, you know, instinctively, I'm positive after hearing that. I think it was stuck a bit in the late 1980s major label, hard rock type sound, but that, that would be enjoyable live, wouldn't it? I, could, I would yeah. certainly be able to get behind it. So band made, yeah, that's probably the best song I've heard from them. Didn't blow me away, but there's nothing to dislike in that whatsoever. No. Well, there you go. That was Band Made and Frill. Now, if you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.